I'm going to present a possible physical solution of the measurement problem of quantum mechanics. Um, there's a lot of ways of looking at the measurement problem, but um, we're looking at it in terms of the interaction, that hidden little tiny black box interaction between an incoming signal and a detector. So we consider a stern gerlach beam splitter, which produces two conjugate pairs, or a conjugate pair uh, from each particle, heading off to detectors A and B at massive distance apart, uh, designated Alice and Bob. Uh, each have a dial they can rotate through 180 degrees. That dial rotates the polarizer field and uh, the detector consists of the polarizing screen and or orthogonal channels of photomultiplier or photodetector or similar equipment. So uh, our hypothesis is um, that there is a physical analog which um, Niels Bohr's assumptions he tried not to make any assumptions but he wasn't really aware of the Poincare sphere which <clears throat> we show in front of you here <clears throat> is an, an analysis of the surface speed of a sphere which goes from the, the surface speed of earth goes from zero rotational speed at, at the poles to maximum at the equator to zero at the other pole. Now, <clears throat> the uh, conjugate pair particles, we're assuming, maintain the same polar axis, the same polarity, but they're heading and coursing opposite directions, so the effective hemisphere that arrives at one will be the opposite hemisphere to the one the other gets if their settings, their dial settings are the same. If their dial settings are opposite, however, then we're saying that the interaction here, treated as a vector addition, will reverse each one's finding. So, unlike the assumptions of quantum mechanics, where it seems that Alice's reversing her dial might reverse Bob's finding, that Alice reversing her dial reverses her own finding. So we get the st same total statistics, but <clears throat> there's no uh, faster than speed communication or quantum non-locality. The entanglement of the two particles we'll show only needs to be that shared polar axis, one going one way, one going the other way. Now. Um, this we're showing it as a sphere, but of course um, the electron interaction will be the normal absorption and re-emission uh, scattering. <clears throat> but a free fermion, n equals 1, has uh, no refraction, so the signal will be re-emitted in the same direction. But the electron controls the polarity of an incoming signal. So <clears throat> it will interact at some tangent point on the surface, the electron spin dictates the relationship and re-emits a new polarity. It's Anton Zeelinger's group, uh, Vienna, who uh, established that uh, the signal has no memory, light has no memory of previous polarity once it's been repolarized. <clears throat> so let's look at the uh, an interaction at any tangent point on the surface of the sphere and we'll use a digital tachometer to measure the exchange of momentum. So at the pole we'll get maximum rotation But at the equator, that goes to zero, over 90 degrees. And then at the other pole, the opposite pole, it goes to the opposite rotation, or <clears throat> in 
terms of Earth, the, the North Pole rotates anticlockwise and the South Pole rotates clockwise. So we get zero and the exact opposite of 180 degrees. Now, there is another momentum here, though, because, of course, we've got a momentum at the equator, which we can measure orthogonally. That is maximum at the equator and reducing to zero at the poles and then to the opposite maximum again at 180 degrees. So we have two set of momenta offset by 90 degrees. These are equivalent to Maxwell's curl and linear momentum and they are Poincare's spherical distributions. Now the change of momentum across the surface over that 90 degrees is non-linear and it changes we know from geophysics by the cosine of the latitude. So the cosine of the angle of the latitude across the surface of the sphere small change and then faster change, faster change and then slow change. So <clears throat> we can then plot those two polar curves which are actually cosine curves but plotting both we get two offset cosine curves. Now that's actually the basis of the Dirac equation. But what we haven't got yet is the full cos squared theta relationship of quantum mechanics, the relationship found, which is the relationship of Malice's law. Malice was an ancient Egyptian doing light experiments who uh, measured intensity of light at various angles. And the change was cos squared theta. And it's that squaring of the modulus, it's termed, that um, has no physical analogue. We really can't detect what. In fact, in physics so far, it's only really in the mass of the spin statistics theorem that what we've talked about so far has a structure. But the cos squared theta, we had to look at the um, ellipticity of light and the helicity of light. We know light is, is helical, light has helicity. But it also, all polarisation has um, ellipticity, it's elliptical, all polarisations are elliptical. Um, to some extent we can go to the extreme cases of linear and circular polarisation, but they are special cases and 99.999 um, recurring percent of um, polarities have ellipticity. So we're really talking about an ellipticized Helix. Here are some actual plots of elliptical light or light's ellipticity. And when you look at the helicity, what it really means is that um, the, the re emission, the helix of light, will be ellipticized. But let's just, to make life easier, think of the, um, the ellipse as a major and minor axis. And where the squaring of the amplitude modulus comes in is where the uh, re-emitted polarity interacts with the photomultiplier, two photomultipliers, orthogonally set, two orthogonal channels. So the ellipse has a major axis which can only possibly uh, maximise its relationship again with a vector addition. Let's consider this as at the photomultiplier now. The spinning electron. Um, it will get a maximum amplitude with the major axis or perhaps at the minor axis, depending on the vector addition, because we've got plus and minus vectors. 
but whatever one channel gets at 90 degrees, the other channel will get the opposite. So if one gets the major ellipse axis, the other one will get the minor axis. There are circumstances where they both get the same middling value, where neither or perhaps both might give a click. But the, that's maximum uncertainty. The same as maximum uncertainty of curl is at the equator, and maximum uncertainty of linear momentum is at the poles. Now, the Dirac equation is exactly that, twin stacked pairs offset uh, 90 degrees, which can now have a physical analog. The, the very fact that there is this um, <clears throat> physical uh, derivation of QM's predictions does suggest its veracity. In fact, even more so because um, Two major experiments in um, quantum mechanics were Alain Aspects, 1981, and um, Ways uh, et al. with Zeelinger, um, which both found a rotational anisotropy in the data. Aspect had to discard over 90% of his data because it didn't fit predictions of quantum mechanics. And... Um, <clears throat> The Waze experiment uh, using electro-optic modulator came out with the same data set and it had to do the same as aspects. They did correctly report this. Um, and so a lot of the um, circular anisotropy had to be discarded to actually reproduce um, quantum mechanical predictions. Well, this actually reproduces the whole data uh, from experiments, the full data set of experiments. Uh, so it does rather suggest its um, veracity. Um, there is one more aspect of this. If the electron is um, ruling this relationship uh, with both Bohr and uh, von Neumann, um, said, yes, of course, the detector is part of the system producing the finding then the electron is controlling the relationship. And if so, then does the speed of the re-emission depend on the electron spin speed or the incoming closing speed? If the electron field is moving towards the emitter or if the emitter is moving towards the electron, then um, the closing speed in theory, should be C plus V, undetectable, of course. But when the interaction takes place, and these are electrons on the surface of all systems of matter, from a single electron up to a cosmic scale, George Smoot's Nobel was all about finding peculiar velocities and surfaces last scattered, um, giving the polarities and speeds of light. So we always find C locally. If this interaction here um, had CSL, continuous spontaneous localization, it localized the speed of light. So all emissions are at the same speed in relation to the center of mass, center of rotation of the, of the electron. Now that does then make sense of Einstein's 1952 uh, conceptual correction to um, special relativity, where he um, talks about spaces in motion within spaces. Um, so um, this finding this, if this is correct, would help unify quantum mechanics, slightly modified quantum mechanics with special relativity slightly modified to Einstein's 1952 description, which has been ignored. Um, so it's probably worth uh, exploring, we suggest. Thank you.